Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist, D.D. from weatherrisk.com, the kernel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe, the commander of chaos. It's uh, Sunday evening, 11 p.m. It's time to talk about This Week in Weather. And we have lots to talk about here in this issue. I will talk about the New England offshore bomb, which is developing now off the coast of Massachusetts and the Gulf of Maine. Talk about the February 16th threat. A couple days ago on the social media page, I went a little uh, uh, aggressive or bullish on a potential event for the uh, 16th. I'm going to talk about what I saw and why. And then we'll talk about whether or not the winter is over and whether it ever actually began. So let's get right to it. All right, this here is the latest surface map uh, from uh, 8, 9 o'clock this evening. You can see the two systems beginning to develop here. We have a one low pressure area, the first one right here, and the other one over here. And eventually they're going to combine into a huge storm right off of this area. Um, so this event is just getting underway for that for New England. And um, actually, Boston, the last observation I saw at 11 o'clock, actually gone back over to rain a little bit. Temperature jumped up to 35 degrees. Uh, so this lets you know what happens here. Now, this is uh, 7 p.m., which is pretty accurate. Again, this is matches the, the, the map we just saw. Uh, this here is the uh, low pressure area. The other one's over here. And we have one front that can come through like this, another one with the Arctic front here. So these two features are going to combine right here. And uh, we'll take a look at that here in the next map. There it is by uh, Monday morning at 4 a.m. You can see the system developing. And again, let's go back here. There it is, 1,000 millibars. Now here it's 4, uh, 80, 984 millibars. And then... Um, just uh, a few hours later, it's 980, and then look at it just exploding. So by 1 o'clock um, on uh, Monday afternoon, it's gone to 965 millibars. It's really bombed out here. Very impressive system. All right, uh, let's take a look at what I saw here for my event a couple of days ago. Now, a few days ago on the uh, social media page here on the Facebook page, uh, I think it was February 10th, I went pretty aggressive with the potential for a significant East Coast storm, which I thought had the potential to be the event of the season. And this is just to let you know a review of what I was saying and why I said it. And you can see the system developing here. There's your rain snow line, the purple line here, and the system bombing out, hitting the northeast with a major snowstorm. Uh, of course, it does not look like that's going to happen. Um, this here is the latest map from the European on Sunday afternoon. And what happens is that the uh, northern, the, this is a timing issue. We have one big piece of energy here. The other one is here. So if the cold front is were to sweep through 24 hours faster and the cold air would get into the mid-Atlantic states, this system could hit it. But instead, what happens is these two systems come through at the same time. And uh, as a result, the system gets crushed as it comes eastward. And, uh, and this system drops southward. So uh, there's no development here, and uh, not much happens. But there's a reason why I was pretty aggressive with the system. And let me show you what the MJO is doing. Now, this is the latest plot um, since early January. And we can see that it's moved down into a, a phase 7 here as of February 11th, and it's now into phase 8 as of this morning. And the reason why that's important is because each one of these phases on the MGO refers to a specific type of weather pattern, especially in the winter months. So during um, neutral conditions here, let me cut my marker out so you can see this. This is neutral conditions here. Neutral uh, phase eight. During the month of February, we end up getting the, the snowstorm pattern, which is this, this configuration. A huge block over Greenland and northeastern Canada, an enormous upper low and trough over the east coast. And this is known as the snowstorm phase. Phase 8 in uh, neutral conditions and phase 8. That's what this is. All right. So, uh, and that's been throughout uh, many, many years. You can use this to see this is true with many snowstorms. Now, you may remember this map. Uh, this is the uh, full map from last winter. Remember the blizzard January to, uh, 2016, January 21st, 22nd? Okay. Uh, there's the snowstorm map. We all saw that. What did the MJO look like then? Oh, how about that? Yes, it was um, phase eight, as we can see right here. Uh, and then, of course, it moved it phase seven, phase eight, 2017, 18. You can see projecting, sure enough, snowstorm right there. Uh, so that matched last year. This is from the uh, uh, this is from the January blizzard of two, 1996. You may remember this historic snowstorm. January, okay, six and seven, 1996, right? Where was this? Now, you have to look at December, okay? So this is December 1995, and sure enough, here it is right here. Um, in late, late December, you can see it 
moving into phase eight, and then a few and then eight, ten days later, bang, huge blizzard snowstorm. So there's another example of it happening. And this is you can see now this is what that was a weak, um, I believe that was a uh, La Nina, yes. So that winter was a weak La Nina in 1995, 1996, and you can see again a phase eight, a snowstorm pattern, huge block here over Greenland, eastern Canada, big low here off the middle east, northeast coast, enormous blizzard. So again, phase eight in the winter months is pretty impressive. Now you may remember that this is the winter of 2009, 2010. If you recall, we had three snowstorms here. We had one on January 30th in uh, Virginia, North Carolina, uh, 2010. Uh, in 2010, I should say. And then we had one in um, also, of course, we had the December snowstorm in uh, 1920, uh, December 1920th, 2009. But then we also had the February snowstorms. Remember, we had two of them in February. I tell you, two snowstorms in February in 2010. And sure enough, if you look what happened here in January, we follow the red line. Okay, end of January 7, moving to phase 8, boom, two snowstorms. There you go. So now it's not just simply a matter of that. There are some extenuating circumstances, but it often works out that way. Finally, this is uh, February 1993. Now here it's a little more difficult. It was a strong El Nino year, so things are a little off here. But again, if we follow the trend, trend we start here January, and then go into January here, and then um, late January, phase eight, and then the blizzard of 1983 in February was February 11th and 12th actually today's the anniversary of it and you can see that again so that was about 10 days later 12 two weeks later we had the blizzard so there you go it often it often works doesn't always but it often does now right now this is the mjo what it's doing is, is the model show the mjo is in phase seven and phase eight like we said and it brings into phase eight and then again which indicates the snowstorm maybe that's referring to the one off new england and then it goes in the neutral circle here's the neutral circle here by mid of March. Then it looks like it wants to bring it back out into phase seven and phase eight again towards the end of March. Don't know if that's going to happen, but that's what it looks like. And this is the this is the Australians from February 9th. Their projections the same sort of thing. Swings it through phase one, then brings it uh, into phase uh, into the neutral circle by mid March, and then back towards uh, phase eight again, potentially by the end of March. So there might be one more shot here at mid or late March for something to happen, maybe, but. Uh, that's about what we're, that's really the only ch uh, chance that we have from what I can see. Now, let's take a look at the pattern over the last 30 days. Very, very clear, persistent deep trough. You can see it. Let me highlight it so you can see what I'm referring to uh, right here. There's your trough right there. Or maybe better if I use that marker instead. Yeah. And you can see the deep trough over the West Coast. And then right here, this here, you have the enormous ridge line coming down and another ridge up in here and what's happened is that uh so the california has been hit constantly with storms battering the west coast huge amounts of precipitation into the rockies and the storm track running from uh, across the plain states into the great lakes which is a mild pattern for the east coast this is the last 90 days same pattern look at the similarity not much has changed now, why has the pattern been doing this? Well, my my theory has to do with the quasi-biennial oscillation, also known as the QBO. Now, what is that? Well, the QBO is a river of wind at the, at the equator, the very top of the atmosphere. It was actually discovered in 1945, back when we were bombing Japan. And what happens is that the QBO blows from west to east for several months. Then it becomes neutral. Then it goes back to east to west. Then it goes back to neutral and so on and so forth. So this here is the neutral line. And this here is when it's blowing positive, and this is when it's going negative. Now, what happens is that when it's neutral like this, it doesn't have much impact. But when the QBO gets a, a strongly positive up in here or a strongly negative over here, it has a big impact on the weather. So in December 2016, it was the strongest positive value of all time for December. January, QBO, again, has not weakened at all, as you can see. And it was 14.92. That came out on February 3rd, the value. So the QBO is very strong and very, very positive. The strongest on record for January. And uh, there it is, the latest one. Now, this is as of February. This is as of February 10th. And you can see the QBO. Here is the value. And see this dark green stuff here? This is plus 13, plus 14. So it's still around 14 right now. There's a little bit of weakening trying to come down here. 
these uh, values are a little uh, uh, less positive over here. Maybe they may get down there by the time we get into March or April, but it might not. The point here is the QBO is feeding the Pacific jet, which is keeping this strong Pacific jet battering the west coast of North America and preventing cold air patterns from locking into place over the eastern United States. That's my theory. If we look at the different oscillations, we'll see that the Arctic oscillation, while right now it has been negative, and we did get we did get our two snowstorms in the northeast. After that, look, it stays positive all the way through. Uh, if we look at uh, beyond that, um, <clears throat> this is the uh, NAO again, strongly negative, not a surprise right here. And then as what does it do? It, can, it goes uh, above it on uh, uh, mid February and stays consistently positive all the way until the end of the month. So again, not a particularly a good sign for winter weather lovers. If we look at the overall atmospheric pattern as of February 12th, this is very, very bad if you like snowstorms. Here is the uh, polar vortex over Alaska. And of course, what that's doing is that's driving the Pacific jet very strong, very enhanced, as you can see it, coming in this direction and flooding the central and eastern United States with mild air. And over here, we have a Scandinavia block. So these two features are directly connected to each other. This is called a symbiotic relationship. So as long as the Scandinavia block is there, the polar vortex will be in Alaska, which is very, very bad news for winter weather lovers over the central and eastern U.S. If we look at the actual pattern next 60 hours, now this here is our southern system. And again, this is what I was referring to. If this system were to come out faster, there could be a phase on the east coast. We could get a snowstorm, but that's not going to happen. Your polar vortex is in Alaska, which is the kiss of death, and a ridge on the west coast there temporarily. The problem is that this ridge is not going to last. All the energy is going to be streaking in here like this. It's going to slam and destroy this feature completely. Watch what happens here over the next couple of maps. This is 144 hours out. Look at the ridge disappear. Boom! Gone! See ya! Bye-bye! Nice knowing you. And you can see these massive troughs returning to the west coast of California. Huge rain systems. Uh, I guess I could call it this one. Look at this system here. Woo! Another one, another one there. And of course, here's our ridge. And of course, in this whole pattern, is there any way of getting cold air into the United States? No. The flow is going like this. It's going like this. It's going like this. There's no way to get the cold air to come south. Not going to happen. Not in that pattern. So you can see these other forecasts. There's monger for cold air and late winter and delayed spring and blah, 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 blah. That's nonsense. If we look at the 160 hours, look at the temperature anomalies. Wow. That's next Sunday, folks. Now, that's not that warm in the eastern United States. But in the Midwest and the South Central Canada, the Plain States, relative to normal, that's pretty warm. Look at the rainfall over the next seven days, specifically in the California. Let me call it up. There you can see it. <sighs> Getting slammed constantly. Okay. And then uh, more. And then this is uh, the 6 to 10 day. Look at the trough here. I mean, it's just one massive trough. Look at this thing. It's just howling Pacific jet. That's not going to change. The vortex is in one location. The QBO is slamming in here like this way, feeding that Pacific jet. And, of course, the ridge is way up in here. So, again, there's simply no mechanism to get the cold air into the United States. So this is almost the end of February now. This is the February 22nd. There's no cold air. Not east of the Mississippi River. It's just there's no mechanism to get it into the United States. So it's, it's not a good sign here at all. I wish I could tell you something differently, but I can't. And then um, this here is the um, uh, day 10 uh, European surface temperature map. The GFS is showing the same thing. Cold air on the west coast, very warm over the eastern half of the country into south central Canada relative to normal. Ah, mild, mild pattern. And 11 to 15 day. Now here we see things change a little bit. And maybe that might be because the MJO is coming around again. Who knows? Let me uh, call it my marker here. You can see we have the polar vortexes left here. Remember, it was over Alaska. That's gone over this way, so we're getting a new one forming here. We have a little bit of a flow here. That's not great, but it's not horror. It's not as warm as it was. And the Pacific energy is pushed back in here. We still have a trough on the West Coast, so it's not really a cold pattern. It's just not as warm. Week two, look at the rainfall still hitting the West Coast of California. So a lot, and then a lot of rain here in the Midwest. And why are we getting all this rain here in the Midwest and into the Plain States? Well, one of the reasons is because, uh, you know, we can see this sort of pattern here. Let me call it up again. That's a wet pattern. That's just shoving the rain into the Midwest uh, at some point. So, and then if we go beyond that, this is the day 15. We can see a little colder pattern developing here. Not much, but it's a little colder. 
And then if we look our temperatures, finally, notice warm temperatures are leaving the central and eastern US. It's not really cold, it's just close to normal. Uh, by this time, we're at the end of March, and it's still quite cold relative to normal over the Rockies on the West Coast. And then if we look at the uh, uh, extended European weeklies, uh, this is, you can see the polar vortex is still way up here in Canada. Oops, caught my marker. You can see the polar vortex is stay up, way up here. This is just way too far north in this area here. So this means that the Arctic Oscillation is probably positive, and definitely the NAO is definitely positive over here. So it's a little bit of a flow this way, yawn, a lot of southern stream energy, more rain across the central and southern U.S. Now, it's not really a warm pattern, but it's not really a cold pattern either. And if you look at the temperature anomalies, you would see that. And then finally, going into uh, the middle of, almost the middle of March, the mean trough is still in the western and central U.S. Very blah pattern here. Certainly not any reason to be excited about a late winter storm in March from what I can see. Anyway, that's this week in weather. Not a very good forecast, I know, if you love winter weather for the uh, central and eastern U.S., and uh, it does not look very optimistic or promising. The only thing I can say is that we might get a, a, a phase eight in mid or late March, maybe. Uh, but outside of that, uh, get your gardens ready and uh, start working out and get ready for baseball season, folks. This is Meteorologist DT from weatherist.com. I'll see you on the Facebook page.